is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome as we gather for worship on this Sunday between Ascension Day and Pentecost, a time in the, the church's year and in the life of Christians to pray for the gift of the Spirit. As Jesus leaves us in his earthly form, but promises always to be with us and to send the Spirit as God's gift to the world and to us, to empower us, to enliven us, to strengthen us, to embolden us, to assure us, and so much more. And so we begin our worship as we sing together our first hymn, At the Name of Jesus. then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We take a moment for silent prayer as we offer to God our sins and seek his wholeness and forgiveness. You raise the dead to life 
in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the church's prayer for this day and indeed this week. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing together before the throne of God above. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. 
I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. <clears throat> May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be good. Take care of yourself. Have fun. Mind your manners. Work hard. Call if you need something. We love you. I can recall these words being spoken to me by my mum and dad and saying these or similar words as our children have headed off to school or to a camp, to university or on a holiday without us. Or when Andrew and I may have been going somewhere without taking them with us. Similarly, each year, as the year six children get ready to leave Old Hutton or St Mark's school to head off to secondary school, I on behalf of the churches, have got just a sentence or two in which to say something which conveys our continuing sense of love and care for these children, even though by September they'll be becoming part of a new school, big school. They are the kind of things we say when we are leaving. Our departing instructions to someone we love. Now it could be easy to hear today's gospel as Jesus' departing instructions to his disciples. It would make a lot of sense. After all, he says these words on the night of the Last Supper. Jesus knows he is leaving, he will soon be crucified, and the disciples will have to find their way without his physical presence. So why not give them some last minute instructions about how to ha act, what to do, and the way they should treat each other? That's what I might do, or we might do, but Jesus isn't going to. Jesus is not entrusting the future of the disciples to themselves. He is entrusting their future to God. His words are not departing instructions, but a departing prayer. His words are not departing instructions, but a departing prayer. The disciples are to be entrusted to God, not to themselves. Today's Gospel reading is not a conversation between Jesus and and the disciples, but a prayer. A prayer from Jesus to his Father. And because we're disciples too, and children of God, then our Father too. Today, as the Gospel is read, or declared, we overhear Jesus' prayer for us. A prayer 
which isn't only for our benefit, but for the benefit and blessing of the life of the world as well. So what is it in this part of his prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples and for us? What is it he prays for? He prays that they and we may know God, the only true God. Not the knowing that is head knowledge, 200 useful facts about God or insights into the nature of God, but really knowing God, being joined to God, a closeness and an intimacy in our knowledge of God and our relationship with him. We can capture or glimpse this in some of the relationships we have with human beings. I, there are some people we get to know really well through our deepening relationship with them and others who we might never get to know in this kind of way. But those we get to know, perhaps a friend, a spouse or a child, and the more time we spend in their company, the more we get to know them. The more we talk and the more we listen and the better we get to know them. And it's the same with God. There can be no doubt, or for me anyway, that God knows us better than we even know ourselves. So I needn't, we needn't bother hiding anything about us in reality. But Jesus longs for us to know God too. Real and deep and close and true. And he prays this for us. Leading on from that, getting to know God. Jesus prays that we might be one. It's a prayer for unity. This unity is, however, not something we do or create. Jesus doesn't tell the disciples to be nice to each other, to get along, to dispense with the differences, or to agree upon a common plan or purpose. He doesn't prescribe tolerance or uniformity or unanimity or consensus. He prays for oneness, modelled on the oneness of Father God, and Jesus, their shared life. He prays that we would be completely one as he and the Father are one. Echoing that ancient Jewish prayer, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Unity is of and from God. It is the very life and being of God. We don't establish unity, we participate in it. And by participating in it, bless the world as well. Finally, Jesus prays for our protection. Protect them in your name, he prays. We will have prayed for protection on those we love and care for and for all those who we are concerned about in these past months, perhaps more than we've ever prayed before. But know this, Jesus prays it for us too and for the world. Jesus Prays for you and for me. Father, protect them in your name. As we gather this morning, in the time between Ascension and Pentecost, when we recall Jesus leaving his disciples, yet promising to them the gift of the Holy Spirit to be with them forever. Let's hear Jesus' words to us, not as a list of do's and don'ts, 
as helpful as those kinds of things can be, I do admit. But let's hear his prayer as a prayer of love for you and for me and for all the world. Amen. come now to the moment in our service to declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and we use some words from scripture very early words written about Jesus we say together Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures he was buried he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let us pray. And in our prayers today, we begin as we sing some words together. And as we sing these words, we hold in our hearts all for whom we wish to pray. We pray for the world and for the church, for the sick and the suffering, all those in need. We pray for those who lead us and hold positions of authority. We remember those who have died and those who mourn their passing.
we pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also, also with, you. with you. And if you wish, do share that peace with anyone that you happen to be with this morning. We long for the day when we can gather together around bread and wine. But until then, we will share in spiritual communion, remembering our Lord's promise to be the bread of life, to nurture us, to feed us, to sustain us. As our Lord prayed and as he taught us to pray, so we say together now, 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And together we say, Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world, to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a hymn or a song to send us out. Lord, the light of your love is shining.
to a troubled world. Peace from Christ to a searching world. Love from Christ to a waiting world. Hope from Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and upon all those whom you love, both living and departed, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God, God. alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.